Thank you for joining me for the Live Internet Studies Week after week, my name is Ariel Ben Lyman Hanavi. The study is one and a half hours. There are two topics or two segments to the one and a half hour study. The first segment is eschatology, a biblical study of end time events. We're talking about the rapture right now, but we have a we have our eye with a view towards the book of Revelation. So we're just kind of plugging along slowly as we're getting there. The other uh last 30 minute segment is entitled a trinitarian response to biblical unitarianism so if you like those particular topics stick around for the whole study let's jump right into where we left off last week we have finally cracked the uh topic number 11 we broke into it last week and by way of the looking at the youtube video response for jumping finally into making a case for the pre-wrath looks like uh pretty popular so far so i'm glad you're enjoying it i hope to be able to give you more of what you enjoy seeing what you enjoy studying making a case for the pre-wrath view so we are talking about four different rapture views essentially i'll flash these uh graphics by the screen very quickly for you there's the pre-trib view which has the rapture in relation to the seven year time period that is referred to as tribulation the rapture takes place in front of the seven years thus pre-tribulation this means that the entire seven years is defined as the tribulation or god's wrath and this particular model or this particular view sees the church removed before any of the bad stuff happens at all the mid-trip view, which has really lost a lot of popularity, has been basically replaced by another view that I'll mention in a moment. It takes the um, seven years, and at the midpoint, it finally recognizes that God's wrath um, is poured out, and yet it realizes that Christians are exempt from the wrath of God, per 1 Thessalonians 5.9, and so thus... Um, it places the rapture at the midpoint of the seven-year time frame. Something to do with the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation being identified as the last trump of uh, Paul's letters in Corinthians, first like First Corinthians chapter uh 15 starting in verse like 51 and following where he talks about at the last trump the dead in christ will rise so we're locating the rapture and the resurrection around that time and i think it's the mid-tribs that conflate the last trump phrase with seventh trumpet in the book of revelation in so doing since they place the timing of the seventh trumpet around the middle of the week this gives them their timing for the rapture as well. I, I seem to remember that that's what they do. Moving down the list quickly, looking at that same seven-year slice of history that many people call the tribulation, uh, we've got the post-tribulation view, which is very popular among messianic groups. It's popular among, it's officially uh, uh, um, endorsed by the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church, like Greek Orthodox um, Church, and, and many of those churches that are similar in structure to those organized um, religions like Cath uh, Catholicism and Orthodoxy, in other words, um, Presbyterian or Lutheran or some of the other more structured churches, um, adopt the post-trib view. So, this is a view that has the rapture at the opposite side of the seven years that the pre-drip does. So, these, these two are the, are the dueling banjos. These two are the, the um, uh, what you might call the um, arch enemies of each other, as it were, in this fight pre-trib and post-trib because they've got the the complete polar opposites of when the rapture takes place one at the beginning of the seven years one at the far end and it's a bit fascinating to to understand that both groups are christians and both groups have strong passages that um dictate where they place the timing of the rapture and yet logic demands that both groups can't be right and yet both are using scripture which means one of the groups is wrong Right? There's no way to synthesize these two views as far as the timing, one being at seven years at the beginning, one being at the far end, the other seven years. So it's interesting uh, when we're looking at these views as to um, why we take the view we do. And then the last view on the list, which is the one that I hold to, along with um, teachers in the past, such as Marv Rosenthal and his currently son, David Rosenthal, 
of Zion's Hope Ministries, along with past teachers uh, known as Robert Van Campen. Uh, Rosenthal and Van Campen are actually the fathers of the Pre-Wrath View that came out in the 80s by way of name. We've also since then seen more teachers raised up carrying this particular view in a very prominent way. Charles Cooper is a student of Van Campen and took over the ministry when Van Campen passed away 25 years ago. So Charles Cooper is also a pre-rather and runs the ministry there. Uh, Just like uh, David Rosenthal picked up the mantle when his father passed away and now runs Zion's Hope. We also have uh, Chris White. I f- failed to mention him in previous studies, but he is a very prominent pre rather and a teacher well worth your study. Go to YouTube. Maybe I'll try and make a link to the video in these uh, descriptions below. I haven't done it just yet, but I'll do it after this study tonight. Go to YouTube and type in his name, Chris White, and then pre rath Chris White pre rath He's got a video out there. It's about an hour and a half long or so. But he does an excellent job of describing the pre wrath view in a very succinct way and in a very simplified way. It's not very deeply theological is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't get you lost with all the techno babble. Um, Van Campen's book is a little bit more technical. But Chris Wright does an excellent job, so I, I highly recommend his video if you're seeking to better understand the pre wrath view. We also have Brother Aaron Eggman, who has since joined the group of prominent no well-known pre-rathers brother eggman wrote the book the saints go up and the wrath comes down and we're going to be using brother eggman's website tonight we're starting into his notes so pre-rath where's the wrath where's the rapture in terms of pre-rath it is about three quarters of the way into the 70th week or mid around sometime in the middle of the last half of the 70th week of daniel or the seven year tribulation period um, it's got some unique features to it in terms of nomenclature and, and, and um, technical names as to why it describes what it does. But basically, the rapture takes place after the tribulation, but before the wrath of God. So it's sandwiched in between those two. This chart shows the rapture right at about the three-quarter way mark, or about five and a half years into the seven-year tribulation, something like that. But that doesn't mean that that's where where the pre-wrath is saying it is. Just for graphic depictions, just for ease of making you uh, understand um, that it's not pre-trib, then it's not post-trib, and it's not really mid-trib. Okay, so those are the four positions that I'm working from, uh, but we're parked out on pre-wrath. So our study is on building a case, this is topic 11, um, making a case for the pre-wrath view. Last week we looked at uh, Dr. Alan Kirshner's website at uh, alankirshner.com. Kirshner is spelled K-U-R-S-C-H-N-E-R. He has since uh, jumped in, uh, joining the um, discussion on pre wrath He has since become one of the um, more well-known and well-trusted uh, teachers of pre wrath simply because of the way he is able to exegete passages and uh, debate those who hold to other positions, whereas some of the other teachers are more just that teachers, but not debaters. Um, uh, Dr. Kirshner has put himself out there as a debater. He's like, uh, bring it on. Let's talk about it. Let's wrestle through it. So he's got a few debates out there. I haven't watched all of them. Um, but as I mentioned in p- previous teachings, and I'll say this and I'll jump right in, the pre wrath view finds itself more than uh, more often more often than not and i really wish it wasn't this way always but in in currently this is the way it is more often than not it finds itself contrasting or distinguishing itself from pre-trib it doesn't do a lot of um work to distinguish itself from post-trib perhaps maybe it has more in common with post-trib but the um pre-wrath position If you find any blogs on it, if you find YouTube videos on it, more likely than not, they're going to be um, contrasting against the pre-wrath view. Zion Soap spends a lot of their energy explaining why they're not pre-trib and why they're pre-wrath. But Dr. Kirshner, the reason I mention this is because Dr. Kirshner has begun to create dialogue that helps pre-wrathers explain their position as in distinction from or contra to post trib, which I don't think there's a lot of teachers out that that out there that do. Basically, if you want to argue 
for a post trib um and you uh want to uh articulate your position um Doug Moo is probably a good go-to guy, or Michael, Dr. Michael Brown, or Professor Craig Keener um, are really good, solid post-trib Bible teachers that I can recommend, that I've uh, researched on my own, and I think they do a very good job of explaining the, the post-trib position, even though they don't all fully agree on their own positions. Um, I can't leave out two other gentlemen, two other teachers. Uh, Joel Richardson who wrote the uh, the Islamic Antichrist book that we uh, utilized in this particular study. He's a post-tribber. Kind of a post-trib hybrid pre-wrath guy. He's, I, I, I even imagine that one day he might even just come on board to pre-wrath because he, he has a lot of affinity for pre-wrath and has high um, thing really good things to say about uh, Alan Kirshner and about um, uh, David Rosenthal. I think they're all good buddies and they travel in, in groups and teach and do seminars and uh, give presentations and things like that. And then the last one on the group, and last but not least, is uh, one of my favorites is uh, John Piper. Pastor John Piper is a solid post-tribber, but I mean, the the guy is just absolutely evangelical, has a heart on fire for God. I can tell, I can hear it in his, in his voice. So um, when I'm not disagreeing with his post-trib view, I am absolutely I'm embracing uh, his perspective on on um, the authority of Scripture, the the importance of embracing Jesus as Lord, um, he's a Trinitarian and things like that. So uh, I, just, I just love his uh, teachings; it just lights my fire. So, all right. That being said, let's jump into our study tonight. So we're looking at a new uh, resource. Let me show you what it looks like before I change the view. This is the Pre Wrath Resource Center, as is found online, and this one this is already linked in my YouTube video in the description below. Pre Wrath Resources WordPress com. This is the home of Aaron Eggman. I'm not sure if he's a pastor or an evangelist or just an ordinary author like me, who doesn't have any any like formal titles attached to his name. I don't have any doctor degree. I don't even have a master's degree. I'm just someone who loves to study the Word of God, and I'm passionate about teaching what I learn. So he has done us a great service by creating a resource that is free for the most part. He wrote a book. Let's just show you the book. Endorse it here. Blow that up. Oops, not like that. Let's go like that. So this is the book that is available on his website entitled the saints go up with an arrow pointing up and the wrath comes down with an arrow pointing down it's a pre-wrath perspective on the end times it's available at amazon as an ebook for 9.99 and as a paperback for 9.99 or as a color paperback for 41.99 um and then what he's also done is he has taken a lot of quotations from the book and made them available here on this particular website resource that we're using for free and that's why if you do a google search for like a youtube search or even a google search for free pre-wrath resources then based on shrink that back again sorry based on um maybe some of the metadata in his website free pre-wrath rapture resources has it right there including a book pre-wrath charts tables and a video teaching so he does have some videos he's got lots of uh, helpful charts um that are available for use um he even has i think like a powerpoint that he put together uh like a let me find it here um tables there we go teaching ppt right here that's available i make my teachings available for any pre-rat teacher feel free to use my ppts in either small group or large group settings so um i didn't actually use the ppt myself but i absolutely reached out to him once i saw his resources and how thorough they were i reached out to him by email a few months ago and asked him if i had permission to use his website and um uh endorse them and he said feel free to do so just don't alter anything and give credit where credit's due so that's what i'm doing so let's jump into what we're going to be looking at um for his tonight i straight give me a moment go back to the page i need so what we're going to be talking about tonight is a very important aspect of the pre-wrath view in establishing it as a major player in this in among those other three positions that i mentioned earlier 
And one of the things that is signature about the pre-wrath view is this really strong distinction between the period of the seven years known as the Great Tribulation and the period of the seven years known as the Day of the Lord. So we're going to jump into that tonight. So let me change the view. Give me a moment. I need the reader. There we go. So distinguishing between the Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord and why this matters. And I am going to do something tonight that I always say I'm going to do and I never do. I fail to do. But I absolutely am committed to doing it tonight. And that is I'm going to read down through the resource nonstop so that it gets captured for the video and the um uh, the the uh, podcast and in so doing this gives you the the reviewer the viewer the watcher the, the the listener a chance to hear the entire perspective before ariel goes in there and starts uh butchering things so um i think it's only fair that we let aaron eggman speak for himself first and this way you can also get an idea of whether or not the, 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 the theology holds together, uh, something that's difficult to do if I keep piecemealing it, so I apologize. So, uh, strap yourself in. This is going to be a, a, a bit of a long read, um, and I'll read somewhat slower, but this will give us a chance to actually just hear what Brother Eggman has to say. So let me do like that. Give me a moment. I'm just setting up the reading feature that I like to use. Okay. This is Brother Aaron Eggman's of, this, these are in excerpts from his book, so that's another reason why I'm reading them in their entirety. I want Brother Eggman to get the credit for the work that he put together, and I don't want you to get confused as to which words are his and which words are mine. I'll just read all of his words. He gave me permission to use this resource anyway, so. All right, here we go. This is um, explaining um, an aspect of the pre-wrath view that is very, very important for us pre-wrathers to maintain our view, and that is, is there a distinction between the tribulation, the Great Tribulation and the wrath of God? And if there is, why does there need to be? So I do need to just show you this screen one more time. This chart, by the way, was put together, I believe, by Zion's Hope, right? Rosenthal's ministry. Uh, so if you look at the pre-wrath view, there are... Th um, Three or four, really three, I should say, three main segments that the seven years is broken up into. And the first of those is called the beginning of sorrow. So it's the first three and a half years. This is modeled after the name that Yeshua gave it in Matthew 24 in the Olive Discourse, the beginning of sorrows. Your KJV Bible, I believe, calls this the, be, the uh, birth pangs. So I think that's what the Greek word uh, uh, refers to more birth pangs. So that's the first three and a half years. Then at the midpoint, we have another segment that is distinguished in the pre wrath model known as the Great Tribulation. Again, this is um, modeled after the name that Jesus gave this time period in the um, all of the discourse as well as in the book of Revelation, the Great Tribulation. It's not just the Tribulation, it's the Great Tribulation. It starts after the midpoint. And then it runs for an indeterminate length of time until it is cut short by the event known as rapture slash resurrection, right? That arrow pointing up in white and the black, first air black arrow pointing down, that's pre-wrath rapture, which then creates the, the final third and final segment known as the day of the Lord or also known as God's wrath. Those, those names are synonymous. So those are the three sections and the, uh, blog, the, the, the website, uh, resource, uh, brother Eggman's, um, Web page is going to explain why it's important to distinguish Great Tribulation from Day of the Lord or God's Wrath. Why are those two segments, why do, why do they need to be distinguished? Okay, here we go. In order to discover a proper end-time chronology that incorporates prophetic passages from both the Old and New Testaments, it is important to be able to distinguish between the Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord. The Great Tribulation can be likened to the days of Noah, in which the sinful condition of the people had descended to appalling levels unlike any other generation in history at that time. Wicked humankind was living as normal without any fear of the Lord and without any expectation of God's judgment, which led to their plunge into grievous sin. 
Let's keep reading. The day of the Lord can be likened to the flood, which destroyed the whole world in Noah's day. Noah was a righteous man who suffered because of his exposure to such perverse, violent, and depraved culture. God told him to prepare for the coming judgment, and Noah subsequently built a massive ark that would carry him and his family above the judgments, above the floodwaters. If we look at these two time periods, focusing on the Antichrist, we can describe the Great Tribulation as the time the Antichrist declares war on God, initially by setting himself up in God's temple and declaring himself God, and then progressively establishing his kingdom of darkness on the earth. The day of the Lord is the time in which the Antichrist is overthrown and in which his kingdom and resources are destroyed. I am going to pause just long enough to flash back over to the chart from time to time so you can follow along easier. So, um, Brother Eggman first described the Great Tribulation as the wrath of Satan, in which Satan declares war on God. And then, by contrast, the day of the Lord, or God's wrath, is a time period in which, basically, God declares war on Satan. So, those are the two time periods that we're comparing and contrasting in the pre-wrath view.